Good morning. Welcome back to whatever this is. But what if I told you that I know exactly what this is now? Let's go. Okay, so um, I, I've got some things I want to talk about, and they're interesting, but um, I've got some other things I need to do first. I'm here at the car wash. I need to get this car washed. I also filmed part of this yesterday. In fact, I filmed the whole thing yesterday, but I didn't think it was quite as interesting, so I'm going to go over that, and so you're going to see some weird juxtaposition of video here. Be okay with that, okay? Anyway, let's get started. So here's the thing. I do that thing where I say, hey, whatever this is, and I didn't know what that meant for the longest time. In fact, it really was just a, a reason for me to be able to do whatever I wanted. That was great for a while, but I started to get this feeling that I needed to have a better definition of what that meant. And something happened and I figured it out. You see, it really just comes down to embracing who I am and what kind of person I am. I'm the kind of person that likes to do whatever the hell I want, but that doesn't always work for you guys. You know how you go to car washes and they charge like two, three dollars extra for doing SUVs? Now I know why. <laughs> I bought this truck with the intention of being able to use it to take art to shows and stuff like that. But uh, when, uh, when you're buying them, you don't think about stuff like, how am I gonna wash this thing? We got it done though. A little wet, got it done. Imagine for a second that I take all of my interests in doing things short term, doing things on the fly, like direct to print, print on demand, the impermanence of that, the immediacy of that, and I use it in a way to bring new ideas and new thoughts and new products to market and do so in a way that is interesting for you guys. Because I've had a problem with you guys, not you guys. I've had a problem with me serving you guys. Okay, so what you're seeing here today, and if it's a little more echoey than normal, it's because I have cleared everything out of the studio shed. That used to be over here, these used to be over there, I moved them around, everything's off the shelf, everything's everything's sitting outside right now. Dust everything off because a lot of, this is my garage, and a lot of dirt gets in here. I'll show you why. You see that? This is something we're gonna have to deal with at some point. Anyway, but so yeah, that's what I'm doing today, but that's not what we're doing today. In fact, today what I want to talk to you about is I, uh, the mind-blowing thing that I finally realized about my work. I used to have this weird feeling about bouncing around from project to project to project. In fact, I actually got a little bit of pushback when I did it because people didn't really dig the fact that I was jumping from illustration over here, design over here, and doing skulls here, and doing flowers here, and this and that. I was doing all kinds of different things all over the place in a way for me to explore my interests, my creative interests. The problem with that is that none of my fans, none of my viewers or whatever felt very attached to it because they came for one reason and the other people came for another reason and so they would come for a little bit but then when I do other things they wouldn't be involved and if I did something over here and these people would be into it but then I went back over here and they wouldn't be so it was a mess but here's the thing it felt way more weird for me to say that I was gonna stick to one thing even when I would do the 100 day challenges that 100 days, which isn't a really long period of time, it's only a little more than three months, that 100 days felt confining to a certain degree. And at certain points during those challenges, I would end up going someplace in a different direction just because I wanted something other than the 100 day project to deal with. Now over time, I've become more comfortable with my place in this world, understanding that I am not meant to do the one thing. There are people that are very good about sticking to, say, illustration or doing lettering or doing just design posters. I've been okay with saying, no, I'm, I'm okay. I can, I can, I can do different things and be okay with it. And, and, and when I find what works in a particular platform, then I'm into it. Like the podcast, that works. I've got this formula now that works for me. At least it works for me. I don't know who if it works for this. It works for me. I figured out how to use Twitter for myself. I figured out how to use Instagram and it's starting to grow, which is all things are going great, except for one platform, YouTube. Now, I have been building more followers very, very slowly. Now part of that is YouTube's algorithm and I'm the little guy still, And but part of it is also the fact that 
I haven't really found a particular niche or direction to aim at. If you go back and watch the last four or five videos, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Granted, they're all around the idea of creating things. They're all around the idea of making things, whether it's design or art or whatever, or inspiration, whatever comes out of me. It, they're all me, but some people don't want design when they want art, or some people don't want art when they come for the design. I had a conversation with somebody who does video for a living. That person told me that if I really wanna have success, that I have to stick to my serious niche. I've gotta be just in that niche and stay within that niche. And although I believe that there's probably some truth to that, I don't 100% think that it's a dead set idea. Not every single person who's gotten popular on YouTube has done that. In fact, there's quite a few circumstances where people who got popular had no clear through line between anything. Now granted, I'm using big names here, but Dan Mace, Casey Neistat, Sean Duras, a number of others, they go all over the place. And granted, there's kind of like some connectivity to the work that they're doing, but they are really just like all over the place. If they can, why can't I? And I'm not saying I want to be as popular. I mean, it would be great if I was as popular as Casey. But I'm not saying I need to be that popular, but there's got to be some theory, some methodology behind what they do that I can capture and still get some sort of awareness here. The thing is, is through all of their videos, there is some through line of connectivity. I'm not going to go on a deep dive about what works for Dan Mays versus Sean Duras versus Casey Neistat versus Philip Frank, whatever. I'm not going to go into that. What's important though is that there is something there. There's something that connects all of their videos together. And I know that there's something that has to connect all of my stuff together or there could be something that connects all of my stuff together, but I have to find that through line. And I think I found it. You might expect right here that I did some serious thinking and some mind mapping, and that's how I figured out what it is that I wanna do, what, what, what I did, all, I looked at all my analytics, I looked at all, I, I did a little bit of that, but not much. Really, this kinda just came to me as a, like, a spurred moment, like an epiphanal moment that said, duh, why didn't you think of that before? Now that's the actual end of my written notes, so now everything that I say from this point forward is all off the cuff, which actually works pretty well into my thesis right here. Folks, the through line is my desire to try new things. The thing that I'm good at is experimenting on new things and sharing that creativity through all of those things. There's this other guy I follow on YouTube. His name is Colin Furs and he's an engineer and a, uh, a scientist, I, I, like an inventor. He invents things. He makes all these crazy, just bananas machines. Not any one particular thing connects to the other, but they all connect together through the idea that he just has this insane need to make the craziest things. Now I'm not gonna go and try and make the craziest art things, I might, but we're gonna start a lot smaller. In fact, we're gonna start about this small. As I was cleaning out this studio, I found this thing sitting over on the windowsill. It was kind of hidden behind some tools and whatnot. It's a little, still a little bit grimy and dirty and I gotta clean him up. This is a dunny. I don't know if you guys know what a dunny is, but it's a kid robot thing. It's made for painting on. It's made for creating on. Second thing. This can is almost empty. I don't have anything to use it on right now, everything's outside. But this can is almost empty. And when this can is empty, usually what I would do is throw it in the trash. There's no trash can over there. It's where the trash can usually is, it's not there right now. I've got these cans. I've got these cans, I've got a whole bunch of them, and I run out of them very quickly, and usually I just throw them in the trash. But instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna paint it and I'm gonna draw on it, and I'm gonna do things to it to make it look very Davey. <laughs> I'm gonna give it some Daveness, just like I'm gonna give this, well, just like I'm gonna give this some Daveness. Just like I'm gonna give this some Daveness. Just like I'm gonna give this some Daveness. This here came about by this artist on here, his goes by the name of 1000. He actually does that exact same thing, and I thought, how brilliant is that? Somebody would want to paint on these. His style is a lot more different than mine. He's more illustrator in nature, but the idea that somebody might appreciate this 
as a piece of art. I've taken pictures of cans like this in the past because I appreciate both the artistic aspect of it and the meta nature of having this thing be a piece of art because it makes art and it can be art. But I digress. The point of what I'm saying here, folks, is that that's the through line. The through line, it's not just the thing. It's not just the art. It's not just the design. It's this idea that I can have this through line of exploration into all of these new territories and I can say, hey, Look at me paint this thing, whatever this thing is. Look at this new crazy thing that I'm gonna try and design. I've never tried to design this thing, I'm gonna do that. Never tried to paint one of these things, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and build something that I've never built before, let's do that. Here's my overarching idea behind all of this, is that none of this stuff is meant to be permanent. My need for impermanence supersedes all things else. I don't want any of this to be permanent. I don't want to be stuck in one thing. I want to be able to flow and go and do whatever it is I want to do. I want to be able to paint whatever I want to paint. But there's still this aspect of it that should be fun and interesting and people should want to be part of it and want to go and try that thing themselves or just get this sense of like, I'm gonna go do other crazy things just like Dave did other crazy things, whatever that might be. We're going to explore new creative territories or even old creative territories. We're gonna explore them all, try these things and make videos of them and have a great time and have just a bunch of different artistic stuff. I'm super excited. Maybe you're not as excited as I am, but I am super excited about this because it just feels good and right. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So we're going to start with Dunny here. We're not going to start today because I still got this studio. Let's say that this studio is actually the first experiment in this. Once I get that done, then we'll do the other things. On that note, I'm gonna go, but you can hang out and watch. But until the next video, remember, be good today, be better tomorrow, see ya.